What's up guys? My name is uh, Tai Zen and I want to welcome you guys to the Cryptocurrency.Market channel. This is a uh, trading, investing, entrepreneurship channel. In this video guys, I want to talk about the irrational fears that hold us back. Okay, So I want to share with you guys something that happened to me when I was young. Okay, When I was young, um, I came to America as a refugee, right? And uh, as a Vietnamese refugee. Uh, after the war and I came to America and during that time in America they uh, the uh, there was a TV show called uh, uh, Kung Fu Theater or Black Belt uh, 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 Theater right and they would show all these Chinese Kung Fu and that's back in the days when the the, the, the Chinese characters and actors they would speak and the and the uh, uh, the translation was so horrible that the translation the English translation and the Chinese uh, actors, they, they were never in sync. They were out of sync. So you had this situation and where, uh, <laughs> and I'll try to do it for you guys because it's so hilarious to me that it's hard for me to keep a straight face while talking about it. It'd be a situation where they would um, talk in uh, English and uh, the mouth never synchronizes with the um, uh, audio. So the video, so I try to do a little bit there so you guys can see it, but it, it was hilarious, okay? And after me and my older brother would watch these kung fu theater uh, uh, movies, right? We would get out into the living room, and we were young kids at that time, you know, like in the first, second, third, fourth grade in elementary school years. And we would fight and try to replicate all those kung fu moves that they did with the Shaolin monks and all that stuff, right? Uh, that, that we saw on Black Belt Theater, okay? And so my dad would always tell us to stop doing it because he didn't like fighting, he didn't like the kung fu and all that stuff. He thought it was just violence and stuff, right? And, and me and my brother was just horse playing around, we were just joking around. And my dad would always tell me, and he would yell at us to stop, you know, playing around uh, with all the kung fu moves because, uh, and, and you know, like, me and all my friends in school, all my white American friends, we, we were always, and my black friends in school, we loved the kung fu stuff, right? So we were always joking around with each other at school and trying to punch and kick each other and pretend like we were the Shaolin monks or we would, we would pretend that we were Bruce Lee and, you know, do all that stuff, you know? Because Bruce Lee was our hero back then, right? Uh, it's not like these uh, soft-ass justice warriors today where, you know, their heroes are like video game characters, like bullshit video game characters and, and their heroes are like you know some bullshit on on, on TV and stuff well, that's not even real people you know at least when we looked at at, 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 at back in the early 80s when we looked at Bruce Lee or, or Jean Claude Van Damme or Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone as as like masculine male figures that we we uh, looked up to you know at least those guys can actually lift weights and they have the real muscles and and they can kick some ass right so it, it's not like that anymore you know you got these soft ass justice warriors that live in mama's basement and, and they're being a bunch of little pussies you know anyways back to what I was saying right so my dad was training me and my brother to be a bunch of soft ass pussies back then right he would always scare us and tell us that oh you know if you guys horse play with each other and, and you accidentally kick each other in the liver or something, right? Your liver's going to shatter and then you're going to piss blood and you're going to die. Okay? You're just going to die. Okay? And he would say this over and over and over. And so growing up, I was always afraid to get hit, right? I was always afraid to get punched. I was always afraid to get into a fight with someone, right? And that fear was always in me. Like every time I go outside into the world in high school, in, in middle school, and, and I was always afraid that if I got into a confrontation, right, I'd better whip that other dude's ass because if he hits me in the stomach or something, my liver's going to shatter, I'm going to piss blood, and I'm going to die. Okay? And I think, well, it must be true because when we watch the Kung Fu Theater uh, uh, movies, right, we see the guys kicking each other and they would spill, spit blood and everything. So we saw that on TV and my dad was telling me that, that if we fight and we horse play and we punch, accidentally punch each other in the stomach or something, that we were going to shatter our liver, our kidneys going to piss blood and all the other stuff, right? 
and our, 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 our bladders are gonna explode inside our stomach, you know, all kinds of crazy shit, right? So I was growing up and, and I had this fear all the way up until I was 18 years old. And then at that time, you know, many of you guys that have been following me for a while know that, you know, we were really poor in America and we lived in the ghettos and the black neighborhoods. You know, I hung around the wrong people, you know, and, you know, like they have a saying in America, you know, uh, uh, if you sleep with dirty dogs, you, you get fleas or some shit like that. And so we hung around some really bad people and made some bad friends with some bad people in my in ghetto neighborhood. And I ended up selling drugs and going to prison and, and had to stay in prison for almost 14 years, okay? And during that time, when I first got into prison when I was 18 years old for the, for the drug felony, right? I, uh, uh, um, 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 I had to get into a lot of fights with a bunch of black guys in, 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 in the prison, right? Because the minute you come in there and you're not, you know, if you're a non-black person, man, all the black guys try to take advantage of you and try to, you know, do all kinds of shit. They try to rape your ass. They try to rob you, steal from you, all do all kinds of shit. You know, it's, it's a bad place, okay? I don't wish that on anybody, okay? But unfortunately, I made some bad decisions and I ended up there. So I had to fend for myself and learn how to, you know, fight and all that kind of stuff. And when I got in there, I remember that I was in the county jail, and that's like the absolute worst part of being locked up is being in the county jail. That's the most violent, one of the most violent places that you can be at, right? Because everybody's trying to test each other, okay? See who's the, who's the bad son of a gun, and who's, who's the tougher guy, right? And when I first came in there, like right now, you know, I've been lifting weights for many decades, so I walk around, I weigh about, you know, 89 kilos or, or about 192, 194 pounds, right? And I work out, so, you know, I'm a pretty muscular guy, so um, when people see me now, you know, they really don't want to mess with me or they, I, I'm the last person they want to pick on, right? Or try to bully. But when I was a teenager at 18 years old, I was around, like, around 130 pounds soaking wet and and I had long hair, I'm almost six foot tall, so it's very, you know, I had hair down past my chest, and so I was just like an easy, soft target, kind of like these soft-ass justice warriors nowadays, you know, uh, the, uh, some of these millennials, uh, and, um, these Antifa people, right? I just looked really soft back then and just easy prey. And so these black guys, uh, especially the, 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 the gangbangers that want to prove themselves, to their gang leaders and shit, how tough they are, they figured I was an easy target, okay? So I remember there was this kid who every time I was playing cards in the county jail with you know, the other prisoners, right? He would come and when I put my cards down and go take a, uh, a piss or something, he would come and take the cards and just mess it up, right? Or uh, while I'm holding, I'm playing cards or something, he'll just come over my shoulder and you know, Oh, you know, look, man, you got two aces there. You should be able to beat him. Or, you know, some stupid shit like that. He caught up in the cards that I had. And so he was doing all these things to incite me to do something, right? So that I would want to, you know, get pissed off and want to fight him and stuff. And I was young at that time, and I was really scared, you know. Uh, uh, you know, everybody acts like they're tough and they're a badass. Even I did, you know. But deep inside, I was scared shitless. You know, I'm 18. I'm in a freaking cell with like 20 black dudes in there, right? And, and, and so, of course, I'm going to be scared, right? Now, not all black people in the jails are bad. Like, some of them were genuinely good guys that was just trying to, you know, sell a little bit of drugs to pay the bills, pay for their college and stuff, right? So there was one guy in there, and we called him Big Hungry, okay? He played as a linebacker, uh, a football linebacker, an American football linebacker at the University of Miami. This dude was humongous. He was the biggest and strongest and baddest looking black dude in that holding cell or that tank, uh, that, that prison cell that I was in with all the other black guys, right? And so he was like six foot six, six foot seven. Like nobody in there wanted to mess with him. Even the entire gangs didn't even want to mess with him because the dude was just so big and so muscular. His neck was like this. He had a ripped six pack. The dude just looked mean and tough, but he was actually just a gentle giant. He was always hungry all the time, right? And 
I did not eat cheese. I hate eating cheese because I'm lactose intolerant. So every time they service anything with cheese, macaroni with cheese, cheese ham sandwich, you know, I just pretty much went hungry because I just gave it to, you know, to this linebacker big, that we called, we nicknamed him Big Hungry. I would just give it to him and, and he was grateful for that, okay? So he and I were, were really good friends in there. And um, his real name is like Brian something, right? Uh, Brian, Brian uh, I know his last name, I just don't want to say it, okay? Uh, but we call him Big Hungry, okay? Shout out to Big Hungry, you know, power to the people, man, right? And thanks for your help in the county jail, right? So there was a point where I had to stop this gangbanger fool from messing with me because if I didn't, I knew that all the other gangbangers in the county jail would start coming after me because I was easy prey. So I came to the conclusion that I would take an ass whipping once instead of taking multiple ass whoopings later, okay? So I, I had to stand up to this guy, right? So I had a talk with Big Hungry. The thing was, I was afraid that the other gangbangers would jump in if something, if, if, if I was to get into a fight with this little young punk, okay, this young gangbanger, right? And when I say young, I mean that I was 18, he was about 18, 19 also, okay? So I went and confided with, uh, and had a talk with uh, Big Hungry, and he said, man, I, I understand, and, and you really gotta do something with the other guy, or else if you don't, you know, the other guy, all the other young punks are gonna come after you also, right? So I already made up my mind that I'm gonna fight this dude, and I was scared shitless inside, but I knew that I, I'd rather take an ass whooping once than multiple ass whoopings later, okay? So, Big Hungry offered, volunteered, he said, look man, if you want, you know, if, uh, uh, you know uh, what are you scared about? I said, well, I'm scared that all the other five, six guys are gonna jump on my ass and whoop my ass. You know, I can take an ass whooping from one dude, but you know, five gangbangers, I, I don't think I can handle that, you know? Cause I was only like 130 pounds at that time, right? So he said, this is what I'm gonna do for you, man. You let me know when you want to whip his ass, and I'm going to go in there and make sure nobody jumps in, right? And I told him, okay, tomorrow morning when the cell doors open and we got to go into the TV room, I'm going to just go in there and just whip his ass then, man, uh, and get it over with, right? Either I'm going to issue an ass whipping or he's going to issue me an ass whipping, okay? So I go in there, and in the morning, it was like at 6.30, the, the, my cell doors slide open, and Big Hungry was like the first one at the door. He goes, you ready? And I said, yeah, man, I got my tennis shoes on, you know, and everything, right? And, and so I walk over to the gangbanger's cell and I, he was still sleeping, he was not gonna come out. And I kick his door and I said, let's go, bro. You know what time it is, right? So the gangbang, he knew what time it is. And then the other black guys around the, the, the cell, when they heard me say, let's go, bro, you know what time it is? And they heard the tone of my voice they knew shit was about to go down. So everybody got up, everybody woke up. You know, one, you know, it's just like, it just echoed down the hallway and everybody got up. There was like, you know, probably over a hundred guys in, in that, that whole hallway and everybody was in there, right? And Big Hungry ran down to the TV room and he said, ain't nobody, and he just stood there and he held the, the bars at the doors and he said, nobody is coming in here except for Ty and the other gangbanger. They got a little business to take care of, right? And he just stood there and he held it and he wouldn't let nobody go in there except for me and that other little young gangbanger, right? So we went in there and, and, then, uh, and then Big Hungry said, you guys have it and take care of your business. Ain't no, and he looked over his shoulder and he said, ain't nobody fucking coming in here, right? You, anybody trying to come in here, right? These two guys got problems, let them you know, settle it themselves, right? And everybody respected the fact that me and the gangbanger was gonna go in there and duke it out, right? And they just, everybody just stood back, right? And the fact that Big Hungry was standing there, all the other gangbangers, right, dared not, they, they were afraid to come in. Plus, because it was made clear to everyone that I was going in there to settle uh, some issues with that gangbanger, just by the prison honor code, Nobody dared to try to come in there anyway, okay? Because that, that would be, uh, you would lose all respect and, and dignity and honor if you did that, if you try to come in uh, in the middle of our squabble, okay? So we went in there, make a long story short, right? I didn't know how to fight and neither did the black dude and we tried to throw punches at each other. 
I did not hurt him. He did not hurt me. We ended up on the ground wrestling for three, four minutes, you know, and the cops saw everybody, you know, uh, you know, around the TV room cell and, 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 and they started, you know, uh, calling, you know, for everyone to go back to their cell because they, they wanted, they, the, the cops were coming. So Big Hungry, he came in there and he grabbed me by the show, by, by my uh, 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 jumpsuit and he grabbed the other gang bang by it. And this dude, Big Hungry, so big, he just picked each one of us up in each arm and he said, that's enough guys, the cops are coming, right? The shit, you know, you guys did what was needed. You guys gotta get out here before the cops come, right? So we went all back to our cell, okay? Now during that time, okay, I'm sharing this story with you guys because during that time, I got punched several times in the stomach, I got punched several times in the face, I got punched several times in the throat, in the ribs, right? This gangbanger, right, had more experience fighting than I did, right? And he was just wailing on me, but because we were just both, you know, trying to hit each other like crazy, none of us were professional fighters, we really could not seriously damage each other, okay? Like we, you know, like during the whole time we were fighting, I didn't even, I don't even think I felt him punching, you know, like everybody had, else had to tell me where he was hitting me and everything. And then I realized after the fight that as many times as he punched me in the stomach and the ribs and the face and, and the throat and everything, I came out and I was okay. Like, you know, yeah, did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt, but I was okay. Like, I'm not spitting up blood, my liver ain't shattered, you know, and, and I even went to bed that night thinking, man, I hope I don't wake up in the next morning and I, my mouth is spitting out blood, my kidneys are shattered, my bladder is pissing blood, and my freaking kidneys don't work no more, right? And lo and behold, I woke up the next day and there was nothing, I didn't even feel nothing, right? I didn't feel nothing on my face, you know? You know, I, if I really look for it, I can feel that I got punched yesterday, you know? the day before, and as far as my stomach, my liver, my bladder and everything, you know, I went, I was drinking water and I was pissing all day, nothing, nothing, you know, just regular urine, nothing, right? And I realized that all that time that I was growing up, you know, through my elementary school years, my middle school years, my high school years, my dad had put this irrational fear, this bullshit fear in my head, okay, in my head that, that that I was, you know, going to have an exploding liver and shattered kidneys if somebody ever punches me. And I got punched quite a bit by that gangbanger. But the next day, I was like, okay, I'm still alive. You know, I ain't spitting blood, I ain't pissing blood, I ain't crapping blood, right? I was still okay. And it made me realize, you know, it made me question, like, how many other things in life did I believe in, right? that were not true, that were not irrational fears, okay? Now I'm sharing this, all this with you guys, all right? And this is a cryptocurrency channel, investing channel. The reason why I share this with you guys, right, is because a lot of times when we enter the markets for the first time, right, either we enter the markets for the first time, like if you bought Bitcoins at fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, man, I feel, I feel for you, bro, I feel for you. I know the pain because I've been there many times in the past in the stock market, in, in, in the forex market, in the gold market, in the oil market. I know what that feels like because I have felt that many, many times in my life, okay? And it sucks, but that if, if we keep having, uh, if, we are, uh, if we continue to be afraid that that's going to continue to happen and that we cannot invest in the markets and become profitable, then that holds us back, right? Sometimes we hear people around us that don't know jack shit about blockchains, they don't know about Bitcoin, they don't know about cryptocurrencies, they don't know about Coinbase, they don't know about Gemini, they don't know about Binance, they don't know shit, okay, about cryptocurrency trading or investing or the technology or anything behind it. But here they are telling you this irrational fear, they're trying to put all this negative bullshit fear into your head, into here, and make you think that, oh, it's scary, you shouldn't do this, all this stuff. Meanwhile, they don't know anything about it. Just like my dad was telling me about how I would get an exploded liver or a shattered kidney, and he had no clue about martial arts, he had no clue about fighting, he had no clue about how to defend himself, right? But here he was telling me some irrational bullshit that was gonna happen to my body when I get into a fight, okay? I'm here to tell you, okay, the reason why I'm making this video is because the market has crashed 80, 90%, okay? And there are people out there that don't know anything about crypto and they're telling you 
that this is a bad time to buy, okay? If you go back in history, after the market has crashed 80, 90%, if you have some extra money that you're not using, like if you go out and drinking with your buddies, use that beer money and go buy some Bitcoins. If, if you go on a date and you take your girlfriend to a $200 restaurant or something, fuck that shit. Take her to a $20 restaurant and tell her just wait and be patient because you're going to make some big money and spend that other $180 and go buy some Bitcoins or some Ethers, okay? Now, here's the thing, guys, right? Here's the thing. All these people, when we go ask, when you go, if I go ask my dad, hey, what happens if somebody punches me in the stomach, what do you think he's going to tell you? He doesn't know anything about fighting. He doesn't know anything about how to, you know, martial arts, about kung fu, about black belt, about taekwondo, about mixed martial arts. He doesn't know anything. So for me to go ask him, hey, what's going to happen if somebody punches me in the stomach, right? He's not going to give me an accurate answer. He's not going to give me an accurate answer, okay? If you go and ask someone, it's the same thing. If I go ask someone that doesn't know what a Bitcoin is, doesn't know what blockchain is, doesn't know what cryptocurrency is, doesn't know who Tai Fu is, doesn't know who the Honorable Grandmaster, legendary, world-renowned LeonFu.com is, right? And I go ask that person, and they don't have any knowledge of this stuff, and I ask them, hey, do you think it's a good idea if I buy some Bitcoins, right? What do you think the answer is going to be? And do you think their answer is going to be reliable information Right? Or do you think that their answer is going to be something, are they going to give you us an accurate answer? The answer is no, they're not going to give us an accurate answer. They're not going to give us the information that we need to make an accurate decision to buy, sell, or hold the cryptocurrencies or the Bitcoin. Okay, So I'm, I'm making this video, guys, to let you guys know, be careful out there. Sometimes we're afraid to jump in during this 80-90% crash. right? And we're going to ask the opinion of someone that doesn't know jack shit about it, okay? Right? So be careful about that. Do not do that. Follow our channel and listen to what the, the experiences and the mistakes that we have made and share it with you, right? If you want more detail and more comprehensive information on how to survive the cryptocurrency market, how to profit from it, how not to make the dumbass, bone-ass mistakes that we've made, right? Go right now and check out www.cryptocurrency.market slash blueprint. There's a holiday sale going on right now. Make sure you go get you a copy of it. In that blueprint, you are going to get a copy of four days of training that we did of a live event of a live cryptocurrency investing bootcamp where we show and we share everything we know about how to select the right cryptocurrencies, how to you know uh, uh, determine when when we get in, when we get out. We determine. We talk about how how much of our money we are going to put into that cryptocurrency. We, we, if we have $100, how much of that do we put in? If, if we have $1,000 to invest into the market, how much of that do we put in? If we have $100,000, how much of that do we put in? How much of it do we keep back, right? So we share all that in the cryptocurrency investing blueprint. Go check it out. Get solid information from people who have been through the landmines of cryptocurrency investing and trading and get accurate information so that you make an accurate decision, right? And so that you don't have irrational fears that hold you back and prevent you from taking advantage of this crypto boom, okay? So be careful, guys, right? Be careful on your journey. Have a happy holidays. And may 2019 be an awesome and amazing year for you. And may the cryptocurrency gods treat you with lots of love, okay? Okay, so... Thank you for watching this video, guys. If you guys like these types of videos, go and follow me on Twitter at HeyTaiZen, right? This is a trading and investing channel, guys, and I hope that our trading and experiences and mistakes have helped you out on your journey to reduce your losses and increase your profits, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. Thank you.